Welcome back, everybody. This week, I have Justin with us. We've become close friends super fast, and I can't wait for him to talk to you and for you guys to learn more about who he is, what he's all about, and what he's up to. So with that said, Justin, I wanted to give you a big, warm welcome to the Tony Shap Show. Thanks so much, Tony. I'm psyched to be part of this. I'm, I'm usually in your shoes, and, uh, and the, 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 the script is flipped here. I love nice. it. Nice. I can't wait. Uh, just start us off with the one word open. So what's that one word, Justin, that you could use to describe how you're feeling right now? Energy. Perfect. Let's go right into business. So talk to us about like how you got started, your why, and then where you are today, and then where you're going. So I want, our, I want my audience to just really understand who you are, what you're really all about, and then you know how you got started. So I know that's a loaded question. It's three timelines. It could yeah. take an hour to answer, but give us high level in a couple minutes, if you don't mind, Justin. Absolutely, go ahead. Absolutely, yeah. My name is Justin Kane. I'm the founder of uh, an executive search firm uh, by the name of Woodbridge Worldwide. Uh, we're a boutique search firm. We focus in enterprise software. I have been a recruiter in the past, and uh, I, I left recruiting and got into selling uh, enterprise software and software marketing solutions. And um, had been on the other other side of being recruited and 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 not so a uh, not so great experience and uh, you know just some of, some of the recruiters out there just don't really listen they that that's really what it comes down to they don't listen to what what the candidate's looking for next and what the client company is looking for equally so and uh, and something had to change and I sat down with my wife back in 2012 and decided to get uh, to get off the cushy salary and and start eating what I kill. And, and that's when we started Woodbridge. Um, it's, it's been great. So where, where we're going is uh, we actually just hired a full-on recruiter. Right now, there's three of us. Um, we've got a, a, a full-time researcher. She's amazing. We'll talk about her in, in a few minutes. Uh, and, and another recruiter, Mike Cavalier. He's a, a great guy and running the, the industry. Um, so, so we're you know, working with enterprise-level clients. We work with uh, C-level executives and um, and some of their, uh, their team, like VPs of sales, CMOs, et cetera, um, to help them build their teams. Awesome. Talk to us about your typical sweet spot of clients. I know you, you, have, you have kind of a, a special niche, but what's your perfect ideal client that you typically help? It's funny, man. We, we work with companies that range from anywhere between, you know, $2 million friends and family, you know, bootstrap companies to, you know, companies that have taken venture capital backing. Um, I, I'd say that uh, I'd say that companies under a hundred million dollars in annual reoccurring revenue are really my sweet spot. I mean, companies that that are over the hundred million dollar mark or just get over that mark, they're 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 experiencing different things, right? They they bring in internal recruiting teams. We work with internal recruiting teams really really well. I know a lot of recruiting firms, external firms don't, but we love it because they essentially become our our, our moles, right? Our internal uh, 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 advocators. And, um, and it works out really well. But uh, I'd say, you know, from, from that, that, that bootstrap startup to, to companies that are anywhere between 90 to 100 million in annual, annual reoccurring revenue. That's awesome. I've been in organizations before where we had a full department of HR, but the recruiting firms came in and there's, uh, they almost added jet fuel to the fire. You know, they helped out HR because, you know, HR is in there interviewing uh, pre-screening, background checks, you know, new day hire stuff. And then, and then they're like, oh, no, we need to fill the top of the, uh, the funnel with new yeah. candidates. So that's, that's great that you said that. Let's talk about a recent win, Justin. Can you share with our audience something that you recently experienced in a business context that you consider a big W and also what you learned from it? You know what, man, I, I, I'm going to go way back to 2012. Actually, um, the biggest win was our first placement. You know, I, I as I said, I, you know, the, the wife and I, Cindy and I sat down and, and decided to, to, to take this on. And um, it was nerve wracking. It was a little nerve wracking. I went uh, three months without a paycheck. Right. And um, but thankfully we had, thanks to her, we had prepared uh, financially to, uh, to, to make it that, you know, that time frame. And um, I, you know, we got the first play, placement. I, you know, I was paid within three months and it was off to the races. It's just, it's, it's been great. Um, so that, that's what I'd say is getting over that hurdle. I know this is about entrepreneurs and, and, you know, taking the chances and taking the risk. And once you get that, you know, you're out of the stable. I really feel like that's, uh, it's important. That's awesome. Never looking back after that first client that, you, you know, that's how, you know, you got a real business. I mean, you already got the experience and all that good stuff. Let's talk about a not so recent win. I want to say it in a nice way, like 
<laughs> I, I say failure, but some people don't like that word. Failure is good. It, right? It is what it is as long as we learn from it. So share with us, you know, a failure that you I'm have. I'm going to throw you for a loop on this one, man. I'm the biggest failure. Uh, uh, the daily struggle. It's, it's me. It's getting up every single day. It's telling myself I'm, I'm the best recruiter out there. Uh, it's telling myself that I'm great at what I'm doing. Um, you know, sometimes we live, we live days, we live weeks, we live years, you know, doing the same thing over and over. It's, it's the definition of insanity, man. We get up every single day and we do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. It doesn't happen. You need to get up every single morning and reinvent yourself. Um, I, you know, I, I would say that, I would say that that's, that is, you know, social media, all this BS that we, we, we can get so sucked into. It's, it's right there. It's readily available. And, and you really need to have, and it kind of exude that self-control to not get sucked into it. I mean, that's, and I don't think anything's a failure because I think you can learn from anything, but I think that, I think that technology today has made it so easy for us to do everything. Um, and it's right at our fingertips. So I think one of the biggest things that I need to do is make sure that I got the, the reins, you know, the horse and, and I'm making sure that I'm focused every single day doing what I'm doing, doing what I'm supposed to be doing, as opposed to like, you know, looking on Twitter or looking on Facebook or looking on, you know, I mean, who cares? Save that for after dinner. You know what I mean? That, Absolutely. That, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to your point, you, you said it pretty well. I mean, I was talking to another entrepreneur last week and she was saying how, you know, you're, you're fighting a department of maybe a hundred or 200 of engineers and social engineers that developed the app to become addicting for you to be engaged. So you have to fight that and then, you know, go back to like, you know, doing stuff that really matters. Right. If, unless your whole business comes from social media, but that's great that you said that it, I couldn't help not to think about that conversation I had with that person last week. So talk to me about, I know you have a lot of experience. You've had a lot of success and you're continuing to grow. If a founder is listening to you and they're at that point of just, you know, stagnation, if, you know, sometimes people experience that. So what would be your number one advice you could give to someone that is a founder, they're in, they're responsible to, for producing paychecks and bringing in clients and, you know, everything for their business. If you could give that person that's dealing with stagnation, so to speak, Justin, what would that be one tip be that you could give that person? You know, I, I don't want to repeat myself, but you know, you got this day and age, it's, it's such a fast paced world, right? Like we're talking about technology at our fingertips. And, you know, I think that, um, I think that everybody is so like used to just getting that email, um, you know, providing information. Let me get more information. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll give you a bunch of info but we're going to talk about it first. I think, I think that, um, um, uh, I think we really need to get back to the, to the grassroots of, of, of selling. Um, let's just talk, talking about producing that paycheck, because if you don't sell, you don't produce paychecks for many departments. So, um, I think, you know, picking up the phone, you know, I, I know you and I have spoken a little bit about, you know, what makes us different and, and, uh, you know, what are the best tools, the best learning tools, the best learning tools, man, I'm getting in the trenches right? Uh, talking to people, understanding who you need to be working with uh, in an organization, you know, like, so how do we get people out of a rut? Um, yeah, you need to push them, you need to facilitate them, but the, your people are your, your biggest asset for sure. So um, it's, it's super important to make sure that uh, um, you're taking care of them. And by the way, we're in the, we're in the midst of a worldwide pandemic right now. Um, so like, a lot of folks don't think about this, you know, 50% of people have the ability to really work from home today, you know, in them. Um, the other 50% of the people don't, they need to be in an office. They might be single. They might be sitting in a, in a 300 square foot apartment in Manhattan and really like look forward every single morning to getting out and getting into an office. They don't have that. So you really need to focus on your people. And I think if you're focused on your people and really taking the time to, uh, check in with them and see how they're doing and talk to them and, and help them and be there for them as a leader, you're absolutely going to push through that, that tough time. That was really powerful, Justin. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Tough. Can you share with us your favorite online business tool that you can't live without? Um, wow. So 
I got to point, I got to point this one to, to, to my researcher, Carrie, she's got access to every single one of my online tools, right? So what we do is we talk with the client company and we discuss with them what they're looking for next, right? In, in these hires. And then what I do is I, I take copious notes, handwritten notes about the, the, what the client company is looking for, and then essentially turn that into what we're looking for internally. So Carrie and I work on that together. She has access to all the tools that we pay for. I would say that our CRM, we use a, a recruiting CRM by the name of Luxo. Um, they're, they're, it's a great company, great people, very responsive. Um, we've got like 75,000, you know, candidates within Luxo right now with all their data, et cetera, and um, in enterprise software specifically. So I can't point to one specific tool. Uh, I think it's all tied into it's all tied into into our CRM. Um, the, the CRM is great. It's got their telephone numbers. It's got their email addresses. It's just like any other CRM. It's got their LinkedIn profiles. It's got their resumes if we've got their resumes. So um, Carrie works behind the scenes in all that, making sure that things are populated. You introduced me to um, uh, what was the name of that venture deal? Um, yeah. I've since signed up. It's, that seems like a really cool tool as well. Um, there, there are just a million and one tools out there. Um, I, I kind of go about it the old fashioned way by picking up the phone. That that's my deal. Awesome. Now, if you could turn back time and you could, you know, tell the 21 year old, Justin, <laughs> not only one advice, like Justin, this is what you need to do. You're 21. This is what you need to do. What would you tell your 21 year old self? Holy cow, man. That's, that's really big. So I, I live my life looking through the, the windshield, right? You can't look, you can't look back, but you got, and the, that's why the rear view mirror is this big and the windshield is this big, right? You crash your car if you're looking in the rear view mirror the whole time, but you got to look back and say, wow, what, what did I do? I'll tell you a quick story. I was an assistant golf course superintendent in Denver and I was driving to Castle Pines Golf Club in Castle Rock, Colorado. And I remember seeing signs on the side of the road that said 30 acres uh, I think it was I-75 or something like that was the highway. There were signs that said, you know, 30 acres, 30 grand. And I always said to myself driving down there, you know, this little whippersnapper saying like, oh man, if I could afford that, you can afford it. Go do it. That's the biggest advice. If I had bought, I should have gone to the home, the, 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 the property owner and said, you know what, I'm going to buy two lots, but I'll give you 50 grand, you know, two for 50, you get 60 acres you know, roadside south of Denver, you know, we, you would have been talking to me on an island and, uh, you know, sitting at a, at a resort in Antigua right now. Um, you know, uh, so the, the whole thing is like, what if, you know, there is no what if, just freaking do it. I, I look, that's the one thing I look back on is like, you know, if I had gotten into this earlier um, and, and, you know, known my value and the value I could bring to both client companies and candidates alike, man, it's, uh, you got to just jump in. You got to try. And you know what? There's, there are a lot of failures. I started this, this online uh, resume builder because I felt like a lot of resumes out there were quite frankly, crap. It was called e-resi 20 grand, complete failure, you know, complete failure. Nothing ever took off the uh, LinkedIn was, I was scraping stuff off LinkedIn. They were changing, changing their algorithms. It was, it, it didn't work. Um, you got to try things and you got to fail. Um, as a coach, I talk about trying something hard, failing, trying it again, failing again. You, that's how you're going to get better at things. So, um, you, you know, but you got to change as, as you're failing. And so you can, so you can get better if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Thank you. Now, what's that one question that I should have asked you that I didn't? Good, good question. Uh, it's actually a question I ask on, on my podcast as well. Like, Hey, if, if you were in my shoes, what's one question I would ask that, that, uh, uh that you would ask that I didn't, um, you know, we're a boutique search firm and we command higher fees than I got air quotes for people that are listening to this uh, around my around my head that than than industry standard. There is no industry standard for the best. I'm telling you right now, um, you know, we don't just source candidates off a resume pool and send them in. Uh, we spend, you know, collectively two, maybe three hours with candidates before they're even presented. So so I guess the question is, is why do you deserve these large fees? You know, what makes you better than all the others? And the fact is, is that we're in the market. You're talking to, um, you know, a founder of a recruiting firm that has actually sold technology before into major brands like, like Hertz, like, uh, like Target, like uh, Avis, big brands. And, um, uh, you know, I, we understand what it takes to, to be successful. So um, it's much different than, you know, some of these other recruiting firms that, 
you know, are driving people to, to determine how many, uh, how many calls did you make today? How many people did you connect to? Uh, how many new job orders did you get? How many send outs, meaning how many candidates did you recruit to send out to a specific opening? How many placements did you make? That's not what we do. We, we align ourselves and, and understand the, mar the unified marketing message that the customer, our client company is trying to get out and we convey that. We essentially act as an arm to the organization. Does that make sense? It does, that was very clear, thank you. Um, how can our listeners get a hold of you if they have any questions or if they wanna find out more information? I'd love them to get a hold of me. Man, if, if they can't find my contact information, they ain't looking. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll, you know, you feel free to post my email address. I'll, I'll, I'll send you, you have my direct email address, but we can, we can share that here. Uh, my LinkedIn profile, our website, um, Facebook, uh, our, our own podcast, the whole, the list goes on and on. And you and I are going to be doing a lot of this together. I, I feel. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait. And I'll put, I'll be sure to put your links in the, um, in the bio, uh, in the show notes as well. So with that said, sadly, we're at the end here. If you could sign us off, Justin, with the one word close, go right away. Go right ahead. One word. Uh, God, I've got so many words here. Um, try. Try it. Just go. Just do it. I love it. Justin, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, thank funny. you for taking the time to come on to, to my show. And now we have a better understanding of who you are. We went from not knowing who you are to understanding exactly who you are and what you do and who you do it for. So I'm super grateful for that. And I can't wait to have you back on here sometime soon. We definitely will, man. And I'm going to reciprocate. So we'll get you on uh, our, our uh, podcast as well. Thank you.